Have you ever wondered what is really the difference between this and this? Today we'll have an experiment and we will find out exactly what is the difference. <laughs> What's up everyone, how's it going? So I'm going to go a little bit experimental today now. Listen, I'm not sure what the results of this are going to be because I'm not 100% sure. In theory, it should be pretty straightforward, right? But FM's not always that straightforward. So the main point of this video is this. So we've got positions that are similar, such as the winger here in a 4-4-2. What happens when he moves forward? That a little bit more aggressive. Sometimes when we're chasing the goal, we naturally do this, don't we? We pop them forward, thinking we're going to be more attacking. Does it do what it says on the tin? Does it? Does it get us more attacking? Do they get up higher up the pitch? It's similar for other roles, such as this might help us explain what is the difference between a central midfielder on attack and purely an attacking midfielder. We're going to have a little deep dive into this and find out what is the true results. Right then, should... Should we get the wheels in motion? We'll start. We'll go against a team now, and on one side we'll have a winger doing the normal thing, and on the other side we'll have a winger... <laughs> one side we'll have a winger doing the normal thing, on the other side, we'll have a winger further up and we'll see the difference in average position, if there is one. So I'm just going to build like a generic tactic here. In fact, I'll load one in. Okay, I've loaded up a 4 3 3, one from one of my saves, God knows which. Now we've got two inside forwards here, A and B. So what I'll do is I'll have this lad as a winger on support there. And we'll have this lad as a winger here. Now, to keep everything as similar as possible, the two roles inside of him will have exactly the same. So both box-to-box -box midfielders, each side of winger one and winger two. And let's see what happens. We're going to do it against Bologna in this match. Let's go and have a look. And I think Kofi is going to let me do this match, aren't you, mate? Yeah, he's got camera shine now. Okay, into the match, there we go. So we're going to concentrate on wingers first up and see what the difference actually is. So there's our lineup, and you can see Cancelo's going to play on the right, Mari's on the left. So I kept players up to their natural side, left footed and right footed. Let's have a look. Right, so I've posted there. The two numbers you want to look for here is number 10, which is Mares, and number 11, which is Cancelo. Now, initially it looks like Mares is pushing further on, but remember that the goal kickers came from his side, so he's naturally pushing on with Cancelo sitting pretty much where we thought he might so so far so good now without the ball you can see Cancelo and Mares are pretty much identical look Mares is there Cancelo's there the ball's close to Mares but it's not pressing yet I just brought up the heat map 26 28 minutes in sorry now here it is so that's Mares there number 10 and here's Cancelo you can see the difference it is minimal but there is a difference that's our average position in the heat map zone so it's very, very slight, but it is there. Now, when we get to half time, we'll have a bigger, more detailed look at that. But at the minute, as you can see, Maris is just slightly further up the park. Half time, let's have a look at the average positions now then. So we go to average positions, click that, and we'll click on just Man City. Now, with the ball, here we go. Now, there is the spread. And you can see there is a slight difference, right? So Maris higher up there than Cancelo there. Ever so slight. I mean, you're talking. <sighs> Not a lot at all, but he is higher up. Now, if we go without the ball, again, his start position is higher up. So you're going to have a bit more defensive cover. I mean, it's so slight, though, but there, it is there. It is there. We have to admit it is there. So you drop that into overall, and they can see. So Cancelo is kind of more online with the central midfielders, whereas Mares is a little bit closer to the striker. So, so far, so, so good, FM. So far, so good. It is doing what it says on the tin. So, what we can get from that is that if you are looking for a goal and you want to be a bit more aggressive, just nudging the player forward in his starting position will do the trick. When we look at the heat map there, you can see it is. It does it does come a little bit further up. There's Riyad Mahrez, higher up than Cancelo. So, he does do it. As a caveat, things like player traits might get involved when it's a different player involved. But, I think that's a good guide. Now, what I'm really interested in is the next one. Central midfield attack against if you like attacking midfielder what is the difference because there's a lot of confusion there do i know not really okay so here's the setup we're going to go with for this match so you can see there we've got our central midfielder on attack de bruyne and we've got attacking midfielder support silver we're going to see what the difference is in game i know that the central midfielder on attack does a lot of late runs like that 
A lot of late runs. It doesn't necessarily occupy this area that much. I think that's the way it's going to go. I expect to see the central midfielder on attack bombing from deeper and the attacking midfielder closer to the striker. But there's only one way to find out. Let's get into the main game and have a look. So the two players we're looking at are number eight and number six, De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva. They're just linked up there, interestingly enough. We're going to see what happens with their average positions as the game goes on. I'm expecting Bernardo, like I said, to be further up more often with De Bruyne doing them surging runs. But I'm ready, I'm ready to be proved wrong. Now, this passage of play is super interesting, and I'm sorry if it comes off a bit geeky, but we're going to watch this. So we've got De Bruyne there and Bernardo there. They're the two we're going to concentrate on. For a starters, look how deep Bernardo Silva is. Attacking midfielder, De Bruyne, central midfielder on attack, slightly ahead of him. We'll play this on. I've got it in slow-mo as well. So Palmer gets it there. De Bruyne bursting through like we thought he would. Bernardo's starting to do it as well. As it comes back to Gundogan. Now, De Bruyne and Bernardo are both showing for it. They're not bursting through the lines yet. Bernardo shows for it more and gets it. Now, De Bruyne, off. Off he goes. He's starting that central midfield attack run. So you can see that there. Bernardo's going to lay this off to Ruben Diaz. Diaz picks it up. Bernardo holds his position there. He's not in behind there like you may think he would be. He's holding it, looking to get the ball. Traits might come into this, maybe. As we play this on, Bernardo pings it back to Gundogan. Now, look at the start position of De Bruyne there. He's way up the park. Bernardo's still a hell of a lot deeper, waiting for the ball. Ruben Diaz, Fernandinho, Bernardo drops. De Bruyne sees that, off he goes. De Bruyne's now off. Central midfielder on attack. First four, get into the box. It comes to Cancelo, the winger. Now, if we pause it there, De Bruyne's got a big old lead on Bernardo. If this is a 100 meter sprint, Usain Bolt's way in the lead there. Breaking a neck run to get into the box. Cancelo crosses it over. There's De Bruyne in the box. Comes to Mares and De Bruyne puts it in. And Bernardo just chilling on the edge of the box. Now, a lot of that can be player traits, like Bernardo Silva. Does he drop deep to get the ball? Does De Bruyne not do that? Let's have a look. Now, it's interesting. There's his traits. Killer balls, places shots, comes deep to get the ball. So, the role he's playing, central midfielder on attack, overpowered that, going into the box, bombing in. Bernardo, here's Bernardo Silva, uses outside of foot, avoids using weaker foot, runs with ball. So, he doesn't have the come deeper option. It was just the role that made him do that. What we'll do now is we'll play it up till half time, maybe full time, and I'll check out those average positions like we did with the wingers. Maybe that will give us a bigger insight as Malaga scoring equaliser there. Let's see. Let's see where they are on the pitch. I mean, in defence there, as I pause it there, there's Bernardo Silva and there's De Bruyne. So he's a bit deeper there in defence, but in attack, not so much. Okay, it's half time, and interestingly, De Bruyne scored a hat trick. He scored a hat trick. That, that central midfield attack role is beaut this year. But that's not why we're here. Let's get to the heat map. Right, game over. Let's get into that all-important heat map and see what was going on with them average positions. With the ball. Now, the difference is minimal. There's De Bruyne there. And it, Silva slightly, slightly ahead of him. Interesting. Now, without the ball. Again, so De Bruyne slightly deeper than Bernardo Silva. Just remember, though, Man City have just absolutely hammered Malaga. So, that's maybe a factor. But you can see Silva slightly ahead of him. Position overall, very, very similar. But what you're getting is... And what it looked like to me was that De Bruyne did more runs in behind like that. I mean, he scored a hatchery. Where a Silva stayed in the hole a bit more. And attacking midfielder will break forward. But on support, which we had him at, he seems to hold his position a lot more. So there's a bit of food for thought for you. Central midfielder on attack can actually be more attacking than an attacking midfielder. Obviously, the best way for you to decide what role to do is to try it out for yourself and watch it in match. But what I'm seeing so far is really interesting. We're going to try one more and it's about wingbacks. Right, this is one that's always intrigued me. It's the wing-back scenario. So we never see this formation, do you? A big flat five across the back. I tried it last year with mixed success at Palmer. Mixed. So what's going to be the difference? What's going to be the difference when Sinchenko starts higher up there rather than back here? What do we think? Interesting. We'll have Cancelo there as a kind of deeper wing-back. And we'll have Sinchenko there. In the more traditional area for a wing back remember a lot of people use it like this in a back four moving that player out wing back wing back you don't see this much there does it make that much difference let's have a look half time and it's interesting so far i'm going to go straight up to average positions here let's go man city 
And let's go with average possessions with the ball. So there we go. That's Cancelo there. That's Zinchenko. Look at the difference. Inches, right? Inches. That's with the ball. Zinchenko's a little bit... Is he? I don't even think he is. I think that's about dead level. What about without the ball? So without the ball... Yeah, Zinchenko's a little bit higher up. He's a little bit higher up than Cancelo, who's closer to his centre-backs. And you're looking at your overall there. Again, as I try and have a look in line, I would say it's minimal. That's super interesting. I would expect Zinchenko to be way higher up. We'll see what it looks like at half time, at full time. Sorry, maybe it'll develop a little bit further. Full time whistle goes. Both of them played really well, actually. Leicester probably had the better of it in that weird formation that we played for the sake of this video. But watching the game, not a lot of difference, you know. What I can establish is with the ball, there's hardly any difference. You can see there, Cancelo. And Zinchenko, pretty much similar. If you go to without the ball, however, that's where the big change is. There you can see Zinchenko is a lot higher up. His start position is a lot higher up, so you may be a bit more exposed around the back there, whereas Cancelo, more in line with those centre-backs. If he was a normal wing-back, he'd be in line with Zinchenko there. So that's the biggest change. When you go to overall, though, you can see it's very minimal. Zinchenko is that little bit higher. So I guess when we're building tactics, and bearing this in mind, it's minimal, isn't it? So if you've got, like, a wing back system for ex example at home and then you can drop them back into that flat five the difference isn't going to be much but you're going to be that little bit more solid that's what i'm making out of it anyway those heat maps give you a broad analysis you can really get down and dirty if you really want to check this out take your average position overall here and all the timer there sums it up at zero because that's like your broad range but if you want to see it step by step grab hold move it across so i've gone to 11 minutes you can see it's a pretty similar scenario as we move it on, 22 minutes. This is the average position overall, remember. So it's doing what we thought it would. They are still super close. As we break it at half time, around half time. Again, you can see Zinchenko slightly ahead of him, but not much. Break it past a bit more. Into the 70th minute, below my head there. The 90th minute gets a bit wild. So it all depends where the ball is on the pitch when you do this approach. Because you're going minute by minute, pretty much. So if you want an overall approach, there it is. But if you want to go minute by minute, even without the ball, this is where it really shows up. Look at Zinchenko there. And then if we go 21 minutes, 35 up to half time, you can see the, the difference there as the ball's in play now as we're moving in play. So yeah, that's a bit of way to have a little look if you really want to get down and dirty with it and get your geek on. Now look, that was a snapshot in one game scenario. So you've got to think of your opposition. All these things can factor it, but... There was a theme there, wasn't there? And the theme was minimal distancing. Minimal going forward. On the way back, without the ball, that's where the distances come into play. So there is a difference. So that's what you need to think about when building a tactic. But the main interesting one for me was the difference between central midfielder on attack and attacking midfielder on support. Where in reality, the central midfielder on attack is more attacking. More questions than answers, maybe. But it was cool to look at. Let me know what you think.